going to teach today's social study lesson. Today's social study lesson is the Industrial Revolution. Yesterday with Mrs. Rambo, Miss Rambo, you learned um, about Pens the diamonds in Pennsylvania. And today you're going to learn, like I said, the Industrial Revolution. So we are going to start out with a video about what it is. During the late 1700s to mid 1800s, England and America underwent a massive transformation from agricultural economies into industrial economies. This period, which saw the invention of hundreds of new machines and products changing our landscape and our way of life, is known as the Industrial Revolution. In 1793, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin in the United States. The cotton gin was a machine that made harvesting cotton easier and faster, quickly separating the seeds from the cotton fiber. From there, the raw cotton was sent to a cotton mill. Cotton mills were large factories where cotton was spun into fabric that could be used for clothing. The machinery used in the cotton mills was developed from an early device called the spinning jenny. With the invention of the sewing machine in 1846, it was now possible to produce clothing quickly and efficiently in bulk. With this new streamlined process, products were now available more readily than ever before. But this convenience came at a price. The new machines required fuel to run, and that fuel put pollution in the air. The clear, clean skies of agricultural America were blackened with the new smokestacks of the big cities. To find the fuel and manufacture the machines, Men worked long and hard in the coal mines and iron foundries. Smoke and dust got in their lungs, and many men got sick and died as a result of this labor. Young children were often employed to operate the machinery, spending long, grueling hours at work in terrible conditions at the factories, usually receiving very little pay. Many historians believe that the invention of the cotton gin also led to an increase in slavery in the United States. It was a time not only of great innovation, but also of exploitation. Eventually, slavery was abolished. Laws were made to prevent child labor and unsafe working conditions. And more inventions followed, such as Alexander Graham Bell's telephone in 1876, and the Model T Ford, first produced on an assembly line in 1913. The inventions of the Industrial Revolution launched us into a new age and have helped billions of people across the world. But the means by which they are made have also made life difficult and unhappy for many. So the Industrial Revolution The Industrial Revolution gave us many new things but it also gave us some bad things. But we are going to listen about some other inventions and in, in new industries that was happening during this time. So here we go with week 19, Pennsylvania's industries. New industries were coming to Pennsylvania. Glass, iron, and the most dangerous occupation of all, underground mining. Glass in Pennsylvania. It's hard to imagine that something so clear and pure could come from a substance like sand. And yet, that's how glass is made, and it's been around for a long, long time, at least 5,000 years that we know of. America's first glass factory west of the Allegheny Mountains was established by Albert Gallatin at present-day New Geneva in 1797. The main ingredient for making glass is silica, a chemical in fine white sand, which is mixed with lime and melted at a very high temperature. Silica is dredged from the bottom of Lake Erie and the Allegheny River for Pennsylvania's glass. Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company, PPG, is one of the largest makers of plate glass. It's very heavy and shatter resistant. A German immigrant, William Henry Stiegel, started out as an iron worker near present-day Mannheim. He added Baron to his name and invented some beautiful glass called Stiegel glass, which is highly prized today. You may see one of the world's largest collections of it in the Hershey Museum. There is still a touching tradition in Mannheim. Baron Stiegel will not be forgotten by the people of Mannheim, the town he founded, 
nor by the members of the Zion Lutheran Church there. The second Sunday in June each year, the church pays a single red rose to Stiegel's descendants as rent for the property. There is a great ceremony attached to the paying of the rent as part of the morning church service. It has become a tourist attraction. Many members of the Stiegel family gather each June for what has become today's modern Red Rose Festival and family reunion. We're going to go back here. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. This is how they're melting the glass. And this person here is blowing into that that makes the glass bubble or makes it round. So he is melting it and then he's shaping it that way. And this person's shaping it a different way here and putting it out. So this is how they are doing the glass. We need to remember, though, if you do the crossword, that silica is a chemical in the white sand that helps make glass, is part of making glass. And we also need to remember that Stiegel glass, or the Stiegel glass and Baron Stiegel, he brought things to Mannheim. He actually founded the town of Mannheim. And here you'll see these are some children miners, and these are lights for when they go into the mine. But this is some children miners and what they look like as when they did the mines. All right. Now we're going to hear about industrialization and new personality for Pennsylvania. Industrialization, a new personality for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was one of the last colonies to get into the iron making business. But by 1790, the Commonwealth was producing half the country's supply of iron. Thomas Rudder established the state's first successful ironworks in 1716 near Pottstown. Okay, the important part for you here to remember is that Thomas Rudder established the state's first successful ironworks in 1716 near Pottstown. On to about the miners. Miners lived a hard life. Anthracite coal mining has certainly had its downside. The new industry attracted many immigrant workers. They were new to the state, often had language difficulties, and were willing to work for very little money. The coal barons knew this and exploited or took advantage of the unskilled workers. A typical mine worker earned 20 to $35 per month and lived with his wife and 5 to 10 children in a tiny company row house a block from the mine. The rent was $5 per month. Mine operators forced their employees to shop in the company store for food and merchandise that was overpriced. Miners who refused to shop there were treated badly. Okay, so what they did is the coal barons who were in charge, they exploited or, or took advantage of the unskilled workers. Now, a typical mine worker earned 20 to 35 per month. That is a person that has lived from here or in, a, in the state of Pennsylvania. But then there was also immigrants that were coming in and they were Irish mine workers. They were the immigrants that were coming in. They were not paid the same as a typical mine worker. Time to rebel. The poverty stricken Irish miners in the anthracite coal region of Pennsylvania were in pretty bad shape. They decided to rebel against the mine operators. The miners held secret meetings and formed a secret society called the Molly Maguires. They plotted against the mine owners and foremen by attacking them, sometimes killing them. Then the men used illegal means to get away with the crimes. They even had a secret greeting among themselves so that they could tell when they were meeting a real Molly. One Molly would encounter another member on the street and put his right hand on his hip. The other man, if he were really another Molly, would respond by putting his left thumb on his left ear. So... The Molly Maguires were actually a secret society that formed and they rebelled against the barons in the mines. But I kind of thought it was pretty neat how they would show each other. They would put their right hand on one hip and then the other man, if he were really another Molly, would respond by putting his left thumb on his left ear. So a new kind of handshake there. But now who was Molly Maguire? Who was Molly Maguire? The original Molly Maguire was a woman in Ireland who was also very poor. She rebelled against the cruel and brutal agents who collected her high rent. She killed one of them. The Irish coal miners named their new rebel society in her honor. 
The secret society finally came to an end when an agent hired by the railroad was able to work his way into the organization and later gave evidence that sent 20 Mollies to their deaths by 1877. Many more were sent to prison before conditions finally improved. Okay, so fourth grade, you see that Molly McGuire was actually a woman that lived in Ireland that was very poor, and she actually rebelled against how she was treated in Ireland. When she did this, she killed people. So they, in honor of her, made their own group called the Molly Maguires. So we're going to go down to the questions, because don't forget, everything that you do, there's always questions afterwards that you can go and look through. So I already answered this one. It says, Thomas Rudder established the state's first successful ironworks in 1716 near which city? The city was Pottstown. All of these were possible reasons why the Irish immigrant workers rebelled against mine operators, except for which of the following. So when you look at this, I first thought, well, the immigrant workers were paid 20 to $35 a month. That's true, but it's not that that is not true. The typical mine worker was paid 20 to $35 a month. The next one is, which of the following was a possible reason why the secret society of miners called themselves the Molly Maguires? The reason was the, so, the society admired the way that Molly handled being treated unfairly. So pretty much that is what we've learned today about the Pennsylvania's Industrial Revolution. Do not forget to keep going back to this bonus resource and watch the things that are there. They are, have things on mining. There's another video. There is the industrial machinery's pictures, the white sand, the copper mining, coal mining. After each one of these you look at, you'll see that there are questions. So don't forget to go back and answer the questions that they have. And then you can have fun working with Rev Rat and the explorers as you do this. But have a great day, fourth grade. Enjoy your day and hope you learned a lot. Thanks and talk to you later. Bye-bye.